Hey there friends, we're going to be checking out Surge Discoverer from ProQuest and as you can see right off the bat this is pretty much designed for a uh, younger crowd. This is more of a K8 um, sort of a um, system database. Um, it does have uh, Lexile levels that go up to uh, the 12 level but um, it's really more designed for your younger users. You can see that they've got a nice subject uh, browse right here that students can click right into if they're interested in let's say sports they can click right on that and it's going to bring them right into a sort of some summaries of some different uh, articles um, they can also click into these other areas but in addition to subject areas it also has features um, it's got animal facts current events pro con leading issues country facts and maps nonfiction books and science fair explorer in addition to it's got a spotlight area that's going to highlight one particular um, item every so often so it's got those very nicely laid out features it's got a nice big search bar up here at the top super easy to use um, if i want to do some looking around for some information i just type in i hit enter here come my results now the results themselves are They've got the nice big title that you can click in through the uh, to the article. It has some information about where it's from, when it's from, the Lexile level, and what grade levels it's appropriate for, in addition to providing an excerpt. So, uh, oh, it also has over here a nice little icon to show you what kind of source this is. And if we look just to the left of that, we've got some limiters we can use. And in addition to limiters, it shows what the different source types are that it's going to have available. So we can see right away newspapers are going to be very popular for this particular subject. We've also got some magazine articles that we can go into. There's no references. There are so there's one image we could go into and there's no websites available. So right off the bat we know that we're looking at something that's going to be more of a current event sort of an issue rather than something that's been around for a while. It also, in the limiter section over here, offers Lexile levels, so you can click into um, the appropriate reading level for the um, article. And it also has different formats that are available. I think most of them come from PDF and um, Discoverer. So those are some of the basics of the search area. If we go back to the start page here, in addition to the subjects that we have listed down here and the features, we also, when we actually, let me go back to my search for a second here. When you are in the search itself, um, you can get back to the main page by clicking it right up here in the search discoverer, but it also gives you a quick list to the subject areas that we were looking at before with the icons on the front page, as well as the features. So you can jump right into those from wherever you're at. So if you do get inspired by something you're reading, you can dive right into a particular area to help uh, do a little further research. In addition to the search abilities, um, it's got some sorting that you can do very quickly and easily. And if we head over to advanced search, we can see that it's a pretty typical advanced search with a simplified interface. It's got your uh, different kinds of Boolean here, or basic Boolean. It's got the ability to search full text or the title or the author, which is kind of nice. And it also lets you limit by the source types, by reference types, which is kind of handy if you want to only look for maps. That would be handy or only encyclopedia entries. We can limit the Lexile levels. Um, or the grade levels, which are going to be basically equivalent to Lexile ranges, and you can also sort the results in certain ways. So when we do those, uh, if we do a more advanced search, we could do Elon Musk and uh, let's do rockets, and that's going to limit our results. So we get fewer results. We don't have the image result we had, we don't have the magazine results we had, and we've got a couple of fewer mag uh, newspaper entries. If I do go into one of these entries, one of these results, I'm going to see that it's telling me where this is from, what kind of Lexile it is, and then it gives me some specifics about where and when. And I can read the actual article right here, gives me the full breakdown, and it includes my search terms bolded, which is kind of nice, quick way to identify where my search terms are. In addition to providing the article itself, we've got this left pane over here that gives me different ways I can use the article. And one of the cool things is if I've got a Google account, I can actually save the article to Google Drive or I can add it to a Google Classroom. So as a teacher or as a student, I can actually import stuff for my class to um, check out and make comments on. So that's kind of handy. I can print email. 
I've got my easy bib support, citations, copy the URL in case I want to be able to come back to it later. It's even got a link to a dictionary, which um, is just a basic give definitions, which for um, readers who need the extra assistance could be kind of handy. Um, it has the feature, the ability to listen to the piece being read out loud to you, which is kind of nice for the readers who may need the extra support. And it does offer um, different translations as well as some related subjects, which is kind of nice. So if I'm trying to do some research and I'm not exactly 100% certain on what I want to know about, I can start out with a search and then use related subjects to find out additional information that's related in some way. So those are some of the basics of the um, search features that are offered in Search Discoverer. In addition to the search of this database, it also has a blog section where you can go and see um, information from ProQuest about different Discoverer um, pieces of information. So right now, as we're in Women's History Month, um, they've got a post that points toward some information about um, famous women and gives you some links to some specific articles that are relevant for that topic that'll bring you back into Search Discoverer. And it even has some questions to try and help students learn more about the topics. Um, and that's something that they update roughly once a month to provide further information and uh, different ideas that students and teachers can use to do a little more research, do a little more digging. Um, in addition to the blog section, there's also an educator's resources section, which is kind of nice. It offers up some features that teachers could find really helpful. If you want to um, just get basic information or share information about ProQuest or Discoverer, you can use their Edmodo community that they've got set up. You can go to a Pinterest board that they've got set up for ProQuest. They've got this nice libraries quote right on the front here that I've been digging every time I come in. Um, they also offer um, a newsletter, but the tools that they offer are actually pretty handy. They've got activities that um, teachers can get students to use. They've got student tutorials to help the middle school students get into um, the information, elementary and middle school. And they've got links to some fiction, although the fiction range, uh, the fiction selections are pretty limited. Um, they mostly tend to be from Highlights Magazine and they tend to be for younger audiences. Um, there are maps that are handy and available for um, social studies, history, even other classes that might be wanting to place geography within their lessons. And uh, standards correlations, which should be really handy. And in terms of training, if you want to learn more about any of the features that are offered in either Discover or in ProQuest in general, they've got webinars, but they've also got some guided research tutorials, which are kind of neat, as well as they've got a live guide that you can use to check out some of the features. So they've really tried to cover all their bases in terms of here are things that our users might want to know about. Um, they also have a very nice help section for SERS Discover. It's laid out, I would say this is more for teachers than for students, although students, uh, older students would definitely be able to get something out of this. Um, it kind of gives the basics of here's how you use the site, um, what the different um, items are that you can see from the main page, not just in the header, but also in the footer, which does offer a mobile link, which if students are using mobile devices, they can really take advantage of Discover on their phones because it's a very simplified interface. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and then it goes through sort of here are different things you can do when you are searching. You might want to use keywords. If you do, here are some Boolean operators you can use, truncation, um, phrase searching, natural language. So it kind of explains what these things are and how users can use them to get the best results. So lots of handy features in that help section there. Um, let me go back for a second to the main page here. And if we go down to the bottom, here is our mobile um, version. So if, a, if someone was to uh, use their device to get into this, they can actually do their searches. And this has been, you can see that they've stripped out a lot of the um, stuff that's going to get lost on a small screen and they've made it really touch friendly. They've broken it down into just some basic areas so that it's really easy to navigate with a small screen and just uh, touch controls. And going into the articles themselves, you can see they've also stripped out some of the functionality um, that's available on the desktop. But as a mobile friendly version, this would be really handy for those students who uh, don't have access to something a little bit larger. So that's sort of the basics of um, Discover. Hope you enjoyed.